talked a lot about the Broglie saying that the wavelength is given by h over p, but we have not said much yet about the frequency of the waves. So what is the frequency of those matter waves? So what is the frequency? Frequency of the matter waves. So the Broglie did answer that same question. And the answer was uh, obtained by analogy. We have p equal h bar k. And he said, well, just like the wavelength is determined by the momentum, we'll have e equal h bar omega. So the frequency, so this equation is the one that now completes the story. Omega is equal to E over H bar. Fixes omega in terms of the energy. And uh, we're going to say a few things. Uh, in fact, this will be an interesting digression into an important subject about waves that illustrates why this uh, answer makes a lot of sense. And uh, that's really all you can do at this moment. This is a postulate of quantum mechanics, that you do this thing, and with this, you get quantum mechanics. So the m best thing we can do is explain why it makes sense in a number of ways, and then hope that the theory that you build makes full sense. So I want to remind you about velocities of waves. So if you have a wave now that it has k and omega, you have this thing, k minus omega wave with a phase, kx minus omega t, then there is something called the phase velocity. And it's given by omega over k. It's the velocity in which the nodes and maxima of this plane wave move. So let's see if this makes some sense. Um, omega over k is the same thing as e over p. We're non-relativistic, so let's continue. 1 half mv squared over mv. And this seems a little strange. Uh, 1 half v. So if I have a particle, you see, this is matter waves of energy E and momentum P. And E is 1 half mv squared. It's the velocity of the particle. P is equal to mv. And now, somehow, this wave seems to be moving with half the speed of the particle. And that looks pretty bad. What's going on? Well, uh, this is the usual story with waves. If the wave itself doesn't, a wave, a plain wave, carries no real information, it's not a signal. So many times when you try to represent a particle or a, a little bit of information traveling, representing it with a plain wave is actually quite wrong. You have to represent it with a wave packet. And uh, therefore, this phase wave uh, velocity being one half of the velocity of the particle seems to just confirm the idea that first, these waves are a little strange. And second, um, phase velocity is not very meaningful physically. The velocity that is more meaningful is V group velocity, and it's 
d omega dk evaluated at the value k that you're using. Remember, k is a proxy for momentum. So, you know, the omega dk may depend on k and omega. So if it's the omega dk is a function, which value should you use? Well, the value at the k that you're propagating. And this would be the same as the omega dk is because of the constant separating the same as the EDP. But what is the kinetic energy in terms of the momentum? We wrote it last time, P squared over 2m. That's the kinetic energy expressed in terms of momentum. So this is d dp of p squared over 2m. Write p equal mv, and you recover the kinetic energy. And this is just, because of the 2, p over m, which is the velocity of the particle. And this is the reason people believed the Broglie. The Broglie made sense because the group velocity of this packet would be correct. And that's a very beautiful result. Actually, it's true relativistically as well. If you put the energy and the momentum in relativity, this answer comes out exactly the same, perfectly well. So, to a large degree, uh, since it also works for energy and momentum in relativity, there was a motivation from relativity that I want to quote, although not elaborate on it too much. So the motivation is that uh, in special relativity, relativity, the components of the energy divided by C and the momentum form a four vector. Just like position and time forms a four vector and it transforms nicely about with Lorentz transformation, E and P form a four vector. Nevertheless, when you consider phases like this, and you have x and t that form a four vector, the good behavior of phases also imply that k and omega form a four vector. In fact, omega in relativity, omega over c and the k vector form a four vector. You see, in all the equations we've written, and the Broglie, the Broglie in three dimensions or more really is p vector equal h bar k vector. And k is usually used for the magnitude of this uh, k vector. So this is also four vector in special relativity, and therefore, Vectors are things that transform nicely. So it makes sense to say that one four vector is equal to another four vector, because if it's true in one reference frame, it will be true in every reference frame. So it's almost irresistible to make them equal. And the Broglie, in some sense, said this is equal to h bar times that. That's the Broglie. The f interesting thing is that this is true relativistically, but actually, non-relativistically, you can make sense of this and set it equal to be the same things, and the phase velocities, group velocities, all make sense. Uh, certainly, you know, we've now said for matter particles that E is equal to h bar omega, but another statement would be that Yes, indeed, Einstein said that, that for photons, E was equal to h bar omega, or h nu. And therefore, yes, whatever happens for photons happens for these matter waves. 
And so also, so this is another argument. Group velocities is one. Special relativity is another reason. And of course, photons, or Einstein, said that E is equal h nu, which is equal to h bar omega.